Welcome to the London Free Press Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Gilbert. Plans to open the St. Thomas Volkswagen electric vehicle battery plant by 2027 are forging ahead despite a cooling market for electric vehicles. So today I'm talking with London Free Press reporter Norman DeBono about what the electric vehicle market looks like now amid cooling consumer interest and some supply chain issues. Hi, Norm. How are you? Good, Rachel. How are you? Thank you for this. I'm good. I'm good. Well, we love having you on. Absolutely. Um, let's just kind of go uh, talk about the VW plant and where we're at with sure. that, because every time I drive by, I see a lot of dirt being pushed around. Right, uh, yeah. But where are we at with in terms of construction? Well, it's a huge tract of land. Like there's almost 400 acres of, you know, just uh, St. Thomas and St. Thomas adjacent um, in the in the southeast portion of the city there. And it is. Um, you're right. It's site prep is still ongoing now. They're clearing the area. And I understand they're going to be drilling some, uh, I don't know if it's footings, but they're going to be sort of doing some digging, more digging on site. And there's talk that there's going to be actually um, structures starting to be built, like, a, you know, a concrete board and, and framing going up by the end of the year. So um, that's a pretty aggressive timeline. It wasn't that long ago they started. Mm -hmm. So it is, it is, it is moving full steam ahead. There's no hesitation there at all. And we drive by fairly regularly just to check on it. And yeah, you're right. You can see that there's progress being made. So uh, it won't be long now before we start seeing uh, some framing going up there. And that's going to be that's going to be a very exciting point in the whole development. Um, you you say in, in a few of your stories, because I, I know you've covered the automotive market for years. And uh, yeah. recently there's been a lot going on. But you say in a couple of them that consumer interest in electric vehicles in general is waning. Why, right. why is that? And, and by how much do we know? Do we have a measure of that? So, so there has been, uh, there were very aggressive forecasts for the EV sector by the automakers and by government itself. I think the federal government in the U.S. said they wanted sort of all EVs to be sold by 2035. GM, you know, an automaker that we've covered because they have a Kenny plan in Ingersoll, they, they said that they wanted to have an, an all EV lineup again by the mid-2030s. Um, so that's a very short timeline in an industry that that moves very slowly and retooling a plan is more than a billion dollar proposition. So um, there was a very ambitious vision of how EVs were gonna roll out. And the one, the one factor they didn't really calculate is consumers, right? Consumers have to buy them, they have to want them. And consumers have been slower to uptake on uh, EV purchases um, than was originally forecast. So um, I don't think it's a serious issue, I really don't. I mean, the surveys that have gone on in the automotive sector suggest that the two factors that are driving and slowing the sales is um, charging stations. There's not, a, in the U.S., mm -hmm. which is really the market that drives this, there's not been a, a significant investment in charging stations. They have to do much more of that. The federal government in the U.S. realizes that. They are making investments of that, but it's going to be slower to, to, to occur. And the other thing is, is price point. I mean, EVs are very expensive. They, mm -hmm. you know, even a small EV like a, a Hyundai Ioniq 5 comes in at more than $40,000 and larger ones, um, you know, $50,000. And of course, Volkswagen is going to be in that price point as well, probably more than 40. So, so it's been, it's given some people some pause, but I think it's important to note here that uh, you're right. There's been sort of a negative spin on this whole what's happening in the EV sector with sales. But EV sector, EV sales are still up. People are buying more of them. They're buying more than they did last year. Okay. They're not buying as much as they forecast they would. But so there is still a growth in the sector. It's just not as as fast or as high as they as they 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 suggested that it should be or could be. Mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately, people are now sort of speaking about it in negative terms or in or in or in declining terms, if the market's not de de declining at all. It's still growing. It's just growing more slowly. And to be honest with you, I, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that I think that slow growth is much better because I think it is more sustainable mm -hmm. over the long term. And I, you know, I go back to the industry when all this started unraveling a few years ago, and you know, the federal government in Canada and the United States were making pronouncements on targets and goals and what they wanted, and the automakers were coming out saying, "We're going all EV." I'm like. I just didn't. I just didn't think it was realistic. I didn't think it was achievable because it was a short timeline, and there is such a dramatic change in an EV vehicle compared to an internal combustion engine vehicle. Mm. It's an totally different product. Mm -hmm. um, to retool a plant now for an EV production, as we're seeing now with the Ford plant in Oakville, it takes years to do. They're going to open. They're going to be in production of their Ford in the EV production. The vehicles 
by 2027, they had initially forecast 2025, mm -hmm. and it costs billions to, to, to forecast. For a supplier, like the, the Volkswagen plant in St. Thomas is a $7 billion investment. Stellantis in Windsor, $5 billion for that new EV battery plant there. Suppliers looking at this area now, London, to Windsor, to Sarnia, St. Thomas, they're talking about a $3 billion investment just for a parts plant. So right. it's a significant investment, and it's going to take time to roll that out. And uh, so I, I think the market is progressing quite nicely. I think mm -hmm. it's stable. Uh, I kind of like it. I think the only thing wrong was everyone being so aggressive three years ago saying, we're going to yeah. be EV within 10 years. That was just nuts. It did seem aggressive. Do you think it's a mentality of if we build it, they will come? Yeah, I think that's part of it. I think that they were trying to to sort of, um, um, pressure is too strong a word, but really encourage the market. And they also know mm -hmm. that if automakers are just offering EVs, people are going to have to buy that. You have no and in choice, the US yeah. and in the federal government here in Canada, they're offering cash incentives to buy. Provincial government here in Ontario is not offering incentives. So um, they're sort of trying to, to push that market further by offering incentives at the federal level, both mm -hmm. here and in the US. And of course, and, and that's worked. That's been a very effective strategy, mm -hmm. but it's going to take a longer time. And I, I don't think that's a bad thing. Right. So you mentioned there were several automakers that are pushing things back. They were going to open EV plants. Um, are you finding that kind of across the board? I mean, it, meanwhile, kind of on the other end, we just had Cami reopen because uh, right. they retooled and now they're doing EV. EV. Well, Cami was, Cami was on layoff for about, they shut down for about six months. And funnily enough, they make a commercial van. There are two versions of a commercial van, a large commercial van and a smaller one. And there's been tremendous uptake in the sector. Uh, that's a that's an industry way of saying there's been a lot of sales. They've been selling a lot of those vehicles. They've been doing very well. Mm -hmm. But the problem was supply. They couldn't get batteries to put in the right. vehicle. So they had to lay off. They had to shut down for about six months. They're now back. They're Now they're on a two-week rotation. Um, so they're not back to full production yet, but they're cycling up, and that's good news. Mm -hmm. So um, so they're finally getting that supply chain figured out. And that's the other factor in this. We talked about consumer demand a minute ago. But a whole other a whole other area is being able to build these things. Like there's a lot that goes on to an EV battery, you know, cathodes and anodes and, and all that stuff I know nothing about and don't really understand. <laughs> but, um, there's, there's an extraction of natural minerals and, um, and there's, there's the, the production of those minerals into chemicals that will actually create the batteries and then and the supply chain for that. And the primary supply chain for that now is out of China. Now, there's a lot of speculation that Canada has all the minerals necessary to, to feed that supply chain. We will be doing that. Again, it's going to take time to build up that industry and extract that minerals and process it. Mm -hmm. We now have processing plants opening here in Ontario, especially in Quebec. It's been very heavily investing in that sector. Okay. So we're going to be able to do that. But it's going to take time to sort of catch up to that. And right now, we're relying on China. And China has a very aggressive EV market itself. It makes a vehicle called the BYD, uh, which is basically analysts i've never driven one but analysts are saying it's a really good vehicle like analysts here in north america who look in a very critical eye of things that are made in china mm -hmm. are saying this is a good vehicle it rivals anything made in north america any north america ev product this is as good as that if not better okay. and it has absolutely crushed tesla in sales in china and they want to aggressively start exporting it and that's raised a lot of red flags in the industry especially in the U.S., who's very suspicious of anything coming from China. So, um, so, but they want to supply their own industry first, and they want their cars to start selling in North America. Right. So there has not been as much supply chain into uh, Canada and the U.S. of raw materials from China as they thought there, there would be. So sure. that's also slowed down the whole production cycle. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to get this battery plant in, uh, in St. Thomas for, yep. for Volkswagen. If some automakers are slowing down production, are there going to be, is there going to be demand for these batteries? Like, are they going yeah. to be able to sell these batteries? What's what's that's that going to look like? Good, that's a very good question. So there are two battery plants opening on tour right now: Stellantis, which was used to be the old Chrysler in Windsor, and that's going to open next year, and that's still on target for that. And of course, Volkswagen is saying they still want to open St. Thomas by 2027. The production for the St. for the St. Thomas plant, I'm not worried about the supply for that because that is a that's a Volkswagen, a Volkswagen created division called PowerCo, which is running that plant. Okay. PowerCo, that PowerCo plant is going to supply Volkswagen. So they they have a, a ready-made market for that already. So in South Carolina, Volkswagen is building a plant uh, for a vehicle called the Scout, 
which is um, going to be a pickup truck, an EV pickup truck. Okay. Uh, Volkswagen is still scouting for a plant, a location to build an Audi plant, uh, probably somewhere in the U.S. And the this plant, St. Thomas, will supply that plant. And there is um, there's another plant, a Volkswagen plant, I think, in Tennessee. I believe that's making the ID4, which is their sort of their van. All the EV, St. Thomas is going to supply that. So okay. the production cycle at St. Thomas is going to rely on the uptake of those those plants. And the St. Thomas batteries will go to other Volkswagen plants as well, because sure. they're going to make customers. So if people are buying those vehicles, yep, St. Thomas is going to be churning them out uh, um, in, in a very busy fashion. But if sales slow of the Scout and the ID4 and the, and the EV Audi platforms, uh, then yeah, I mean, production will be slower at St. Thomas. So it's all dependent on the consumer and it's all dependent on demand. But they're forecasting that they're going to be busy. In 2027, when it opens, we've been talking about, we've been reporting up to 3,000 workers. There, that plant has capacity for 3,000 workers and to make enough batteries for about a million vehicles a year. So it's not going to do that in 2027. It's not going to be at those numbers, both in staffing. Or, I mean, I don't think so, maybe, but I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Or in um, or in production cycle because again that demand is going to take a while to build and so right. if it takes a few years to sort of ramp that up again I'm a big fan of slow growth I think slow growth is sustainable growth sure. uh, when things grow too quickly uh, it can be as damaging as as you know as, as slow sales right. so uh, I don't think you don't want to be too big too soon. Yeah. Uh, talk about parts, the parts plants, because you were, you were just in Toronto at a, a major conference. You were talking a lot about EV uh, vehicles and parts right. and with a lot of industry experts. There are people chomping at the bit to get into the St. Thomas area to supply this battery plant, right? Like who's who wants Absolutely. to come here? So, you know, there were more than 300 suppliers at this or people attending uh, the Supplier Days conference in Toronto that, that I attended. More than 100 suppliers, 300 people uh, attending. And um, there, are, there was a lot of aggressive questioning about the infrastructure here, about how we can accommodate. So I, you know, I networked with, uh, with a few suppliers and I heard some very positive feedback. They're very excited and they think that this is very achievable. This, they like very much the fact that, I mentioned earlier that Volkswagen's built on about 400 acres in St. Thomas. Mm -hmm. Well, St. Thomas in the province of Ontario and central Elgin created a, a, a um, a park there, an industrial park of 1,500 acres. So there's more than a thousand other acres ready to go that suppliers can locate on. And land and availability of land close to a plant is the number one concern for any suppliers. That's already taken care of. And that's why Volkswagen so aggressively assembled such a large parcel of land. They knew that's what suppliers would want and it's mm -hmm. ready for them. So they're lining up. I talked to Sean Dyke, who is the, uh, the Chief Executive of Economic Development at St. Thomas after the conference, and he was very busy. He is very confident that uh, four, five, six suppliers will locate in the area. It may take them, again, years to roll out, but um, he's confident that's going to happen. I've spoken with the Economic Development Office in London. They are absolutely entertaining um, uh, uh, interest. There is suppliers coming here looking in this area. We're hearing a lot of speculation that suppliers are looking at Sarnia. Mm -hmm. All this area is going to be very is going to be very busy. The EV battery cycle is such that it makes a lot of large, heavy components to go in the batteries, and they have to locate nearby. You can't have a plant, I mean, you could, but it's more expensive to have a plant in Texas, supply a plant here in Ontario. Right. So, and that's going to happen. There are some parts where that's going to happen, but uh, they want, a lot of suppliers want to locate nearby. So they want to know about land, and that's been answered. They want to know about workforce. They feel confident that immigration levels being what they are, that they're going to be able to find the available workforce. Mm -hmm. And we saw with Go off on a tangent, Maple Leaf Foods, poultry processing plant St. Thomas yep. has been very successful in hiring. And I would question whether they would be able to. And they've done a terrific job and they've, they're very happy with that. And the Amazon plant also in, in South Town in South Township, you know, they have uh, they're also opening uh, employed very well. They've hired a lot of people for that plant. So people are hitting their employment numbers. So that's that's a really that's a really good sign. That's so, good news, yeah. yeah the land uh, workforce and they want incentives from the Ontario government. They want the Ontario government to be on on board, giving them some help and support. That's a province says that they will be there. We don't know how much. So okay. 
Bit of a well, that was that was actually my next question. Talk about support from the province, um, because Premier Doug Ford over the last several years has really pushed EV uh, vehicles in production yeah. in in Ontario. Um, really what, what kind of support are we are we getting for that? So, I mean, uh, Ford has come out, and and Vic Fideli is the Minister of Economic Development, who's his right hand guy, and I think you know, I think Vic does, with all due respect, I think Vic does a lot of that heavy lifting on okay. this. Uh, <laughs> And, and Vic also has a good working relationship with the federal government, mm. even though the federal government, the conservative government here in Ontario, the federal government, the government federally, um, they work very well hand in glove together. And Vic has often talked about that, about he doesn't care who's in power, he will work with them. So, um, the you know, Invest Ontario was one of the agencies of the, the ministries making a presentation at this conference, and they talked about uh, all kinds of, um, there's grants available for job training, workforce development, hiring, there's grants available. There's there's tax incentives that that could be accrued on various levels. Um, there's support uh, across the board in a lot of different areas, um, and it's a long list of things they can do. So uh, when we see the suppliers sort of, and we know what kind of support the Ontario and federal government gave to Volkswagen to Stellantis. I mean, it was in the billions. Mm -hmm. So you know, we'll wait and see you know what the suppliers um, receive from the feds and the provincial government but yes i mean there will be there will be support for that and and people will be angry about that there will be some opposition to it it's like oh tax dollars going to support you know, corporate welfare um we hear that all the time but uh and i understand that argument but it's just a fact it's just how you do business if you don't do that here they'll do that in the u.s there are very republican very tea party states very mega states in the southern u.s who think nothing of throwing billions and hundreds of millions of dollars at manufacturers looking to locate there. That's why the Canadian government had to incentivize so heavily to locate Stellantis here and to locate Volkswagen here is because that's the competition. And uh, it's always struck me as ironic that politically the conservative movement in Canada is very critical of incentives to, to industry to locate here. Whereas in the US, the far right mega Republicans can't throw enough money at industry to, to locate there. It's always struck me as a bit of ironic. I don't really understand. Mm -hmm. But uh, get over it and get your heads around it because it's going to happen and it has to happen. It's coming, yeah. Uh, switching gears a little bit, because this is such an interesting thing to me. Maybe you could just explain it a little more. There is an all-Canadian vehicle, electric vehicle, that's that's been produced as a stereoty uh, stereotype, prototype. <laughs> not a stereotype okay, maybe sure. it is a stereotype i don't know uh yeah. it's called project arrow so talk about yeah. this vehicle what what is the importance of this vehicle but all the parts are from here in canada so that's yeah. kind of cool too i love this story because because flavio volpe is the, is the ceo of apma the auto parts manufacturers association of canada and uh what he's done is you know we have a very we have a brilliant and very diverse part sector across canada but largely in ontario mm -hmm. and so you know, they market themselves and they sell themselves. And so Flavio said, instead of us saying, hey, we make great wheels or tires or bumpers or, or switches, <clears throat> why don't we build a vehicle that shows that? Especially at a time when the market is changing. We're, more, we're transitioning now, we're at crossroads as an industry from the IEC internal combustion engine to the EV vehicle. Let's develop this EV vehicle and mm -hmm. let's take on a, on, a, on a tour across auto shows and say, if you want a part supplier for the, that seating, that interior, that fabric, uh, that dashboard, that electronic system, uh, that EV system, we can we make it here in Ontario. Look, and I'm not going to show you a, a spreadsheet. I'm going to show you how it works in a car. Yeah, here's what we can do. That's cool. I think it's brilliant. It totally mm -hmm. works. They've been dragging this, driving this thing across auto shows, really across the world. They're taking it everywhere. Mm -hmm. And it's led to hundreds of million dollars in sales for suppliers. <clears throat> so it's it's worked. And it is, and the supplier industry is very excited about it. They're very supportive. And so uh, they now want to develop Aero 2.0. So the APMA wants to develop a second vehicle because this one is several years old now. And this industry is changing very quickly. Mm. So they want to showcase some new technology. They want to develop their own vehicle. The federal government, again, uh, paid for a lot of the production on the Aero. And that has really been a boom to industry. Mm. Um, sorry, Taxpayers Federation. That's, that's money well spent. <laughs> and... Um, Aero 2.0 is going to cost even more, uh, but it's good, again, in the tens of millions of dollars, but it is going to be an investment that, it, that largely will likely pay off substantially for industry manufacturing in Canada and uh, 
I think it's brilliant and it, and it has yeah. worked. And uh, so they're showing and if off. The make the table, they can do that. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's what I was going to say oh. to show off the parts and what we can do. But right. will they make this as a a regular vehicle that they'll sell? If someone, if someone approached Flavio and the APMA and said they love it, they want to make it, I think that's that's a conversation that uh, the APMA will have with any manufacturer. Mm. Uh, I don't think it's happened yet. I don't know if it will, but uh, could it? It could possibly, but I don't think that's that's on the horizon yet, from what I've heard, anyway. Okay. All right. What about well, vehicles? Yeah. We well, we've covered so much. I mean, there's so much to talk about on this so topic, much. and I'm sure you're going to have more for us. Uh, we're going to follow your stories at lfpress.com because I know that this is your jam. This the automotive <laughs> sector is your thing. Uh, here, here. It's weird. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. My pleasure, Rachel. Anytime. And again, you're right. It's a, there's a lot going on. So anytime you want an update, uh, happy to chat.